Welcome to Rebuilding FC Kaiserslautern and this is the fifth and final season of the rebuild and after winning the DFB Pokal last season, our first major trophy with the club, it's all or nothing this season. We have to win the Bundesliga. Can we do it? Let's go and find out. Welcome to the video folks and let's get straight into it. No time to waste. It's not got off to the best of starts, I have to admit. We started the season with a 1-0 defeat in the Super Cup against Bayern Munich, who we have next in the league, by the way. Lost that 1-0. Jamal Musiala scoring for them. Yeah, we just we weren't anywhere near this. It weren't even a competition, to be fair. We had no shots on target. Only one shot at goal compared to their 20 shots at goal. We were just terrible. We really were. Then we started in the DFB Pokal, the defence of our trophy, of course. We did go fairly strong in this, whereas usually we do rotate and go with a much weaker team, especially when it's against a non-league team like Barrackstad. But we went pretty strong, and um, Borges Sanchez got a hat-trick. Eric Martel getting on the score sheet as well. And then we started our Bundesliga campaign with an away trip to Freiburg, a one-all draw in this game. Um, George Lenny Kenner getting on the score sheet for us, one of their new signings, along with Martel and a few others. We'll get into the new signings in a moment. Then we were at home against Wolfsburg, our first home game of the season. Fabian Reese getting on the score sheet for us, for most Mendy picking up an injury. And then against Bayer Leverkusen, as we always do against Bayer Leverkusen, really, we lost 3-1. They were, what, 2-0 up before we got a Colin klein Beckel headed goal from a corner. And then they sealed it with, three, with a third goal to make it 3-1. And as I say, we now play Bayern Munich, who are currently second in the Bundesliga. If we have a look at the Bundesliga table, we are way down in 11th. One win, one draw, one defeat from three games. Other teams have played, but if we win today, we will go on to seven points. We could, would shoot back up to fifth or sixth in the table. Although playing against Bayern, I'm assuming we're going to lose which means we'll either stay where we are or potentially drop down to 12th or 13th. So, yeah, playing by Leverkusen, Freiburg, who are unbeaten so far, and by Munich, as they're three of their first four games, the fixture list has not been kind to us. Talking of fixture lists, we have a look at the season preview. According to this, we're expected to finish mid-table. Hopefully, we can win the Bundesliga. That is the aim this season. We had third two seasons ago, second last season, it's surely written in the stars that we are going to win the Bundesliga. We obviously would like to retain our DFB Pokal as well. If we then have a look at the transfers that we've done so far, or well, I say so far, that is it for now because the transfer window is shut. Let me have a look back here. No, nothing else back there to look at. So in terms of the outs, there's not been many leaving. David Wildars has gone on loan to De Grafschap for £2,600 loan fee. And Jan Bola has completed a permanent move to Sturm Graz for £230,000, rising to £275,000. So £235,000 is all we've had come in. In terms of what we've spent, we've spent £106 million. We've really gone for it. We've tried improving every area of the pitch. We have had a little cheeky free signing in there as well. You know I like a little free signing. And let's go through them. First one is Rasmus Carstensen. Essentially, he's in as a backup player. He can play right back or left back, 26-year-old um, Danish, not an international. Does have a valuation of around £20 million. Like I said, we bought him for £13 million, so there is a potential to make a bit of a profit on him. Three-star current and potential ability. Then we move on to Sebastian Buscelli, who is probably a big, big money signing. Can play anywhere along the back, along the back. Uruguayan has had 12 caps, 23 years old, has a valuation of up to 55 million. Prefers to be left back, can play centre back and right back to in equal measure. Three and a half star current and potential ability. He's got great anticipation. He's pretty decent all over the pitch, has really decent physicals as well. And yeah, he's in as our right back. So yeah, we're playing him over here on a right back um, role. Really looking forward to him. Like I say, he's He's a big money signing, along with this guy, George Lenny Kenner, who last time I looked at him, he was listed as a wonder kid. He's not listed as that now, not sure why. He is our striker, and 
I think he's an improvement on O'Day and Hanslick. Hanslick has picked up an injury, which could keep him out for two to four months. I've popped him in the second team, basically. He's out of contract at the end of this season, so he's not going to play for us again. So, yeah, he's coming. He's had a great pre-season. Nine goals and an assist in five starts and two sub-appearances at 7.71. He has got one goal in two games in the Bundesliga. Not quite got going yet, but he does have five-star potential. I think there's big things in store for this this boy. I really do. He's French. He's, he's not capped at senior level yet. He has had 321 caps. So, hopefully, he can get some game time for France as well. Then we went to Juventus and we got Anthony Milambo for 9.25 million. Two and a half star current with four star potential, 22-year-old Dutchman. Can play in the defensive midfield role, although with six attacking, you probably wouldn't want him there. Is more suited in this role to the advanced playmaker role. He can do the box-to-box -box a little bit as well. And also can play in the more attacking midfield role as well. He's got a valuation now of 8.4 million which is obviously below what we paid for him. But I think as an option, I think he's a really decent one. Alex Garrido on a free transfer. Yeah, he's only really coming in as backup, but two and a half star current three, three and a half star potential. 23 year old Spaniard. Yeah, I, I think as a backup for our deep line playmaker, box to box midfield role, he can do a job for us. Then we've got Eric Martel that came in for 9.25 million from FC Colm. He can play in this role as a ball-winning midfielder. Three and a half stars for that role. We do tend to have him a little bit further forward as a box-to-box -box midfielder in this role because he can do that better than most of our players. His aggression, his bravery, his determination, his work rate, his, or his teamwork, his work rate, his stamina, all really, really good. Six foot two means he's useful to us when it comes to defending set pieces and also attacking them. So, yeah, £23 million valuation as well. Again, I think he's a really, really good player. And in terms of pre-season, he's had a decent pre-season with three assists and a goal from six appearances at 7.17. He's shone in the DFB Pacal with one goal and two assists at an 8.50. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully he can be a real good sign alongside Nabel. And we'll get to Nabel in a moment as well. Brajan Grudo is coming from Heidenheim for £12 million. Two and a half star kind of be three and a half star potential can play anywhere along here. Can also play up front as well. I just think to add him to the ranks of Reese, Borges, Sanchez, Matondo, I think that just completes the fact that we now have four really good quality players in these positions here. So quite happy with him. And he's German, so it keeps the fans and the board happy. And then we had a position where we had Stephen Aday injured. Obviously, Hanslick's out injured. All we had was Lenny Kenner up front. I was having to use Lucas Lybrook as a backup striker and he really isn't a backup striker so we went to Newcastle for Keki Top bit of a an emergency signing three and a half million he, was, he went there they bought him for five million pound last season he hasn't even played a game for him we bought him back to Germany after he was at Schalke for most of his career and yeah he's just here as a backup striker don't expect to see much from him you know now we've got Stephen Aday back with Lenny Kenner available as well, they will be the starter and the sub. So he will just be here as of when we decide we need him. If we go to our tactics, we'll have a look at who's out injured at the moment. Miroslav Ilyev, we brought in from the youth team. He's got a lot of potential. His arrows are going in the right direction. I want to be able to use him in spells this season. The same with Benjamin Ola as well. He's come in. Marcel Lotka is out injured. Now, we had a bit of an issue with... Deant Ramage because he got the ump again because of his lack of play time even though they've only played a couple of games this season. He So I, I said I'd sell him, he agreed. We put him on a transfer list for five million. We did have offers from Middlesbrough that was something like three million pound up front. Then with add-ons and instalments comes to 5.25 million. I rejected it. I'm only accepting straight up cash five million pound offer. I'm not having add-ons and instalments for him because at the end of the day I would need to sign a replacement. The transfer window is now closed. He's not gone anywhere and he will be playing for us at least for the next few weeks because Marcel Willocker is out with a twisted ankle for uh, around three weeks. So he will start to begin with. We might even keep him playing so that he wants to withdraw his transfer request and then we can drop him for Lotka. But like I say, he is wanted by Antwerp, Middlesbrough, 
Werder Bremen and Genoa. So let's see what happens in that, that regard. He may go in part two of this video, but I'm doubtful that he will go. However, Paul Nabel, now he's not class as wanted at the moment, but we, he has got a minimum fee release clause in his contract of 20 million and final triggered it. They offered a straight 20 million. I obviously couldn't do anything about that. Thankfully, he rejected it because they, they offered that 20 million four hours before the transfer window closed, which means I would have been very, very tight push to try and find any kind of replacement, even though 20 million would have gone down very handy. It would have freed 41,000 pounds up in the wage budget. Not that I want to lose him. He's our best midfielder and done so well for us last season. It was one of the big reasons why we had such a good season last season. So I really didn't want to lose him. Thankfully, I haven't. He, he's, he is still at the club. If we have a look at the finances, we've got 78.9 million, well, 79 million pounds in the bank. I have had to move quite a bit of transfer budget over into wage budget. We started the season with around 710,000 in the wage budget. We're nearly up to a million, so that goes to show how much we've had to move over. We do still have 2.6 million in the transfer budget with 25,000 pounds to spend in the wage budget, which isn't really a great deal because even squad players that are coming in now are want. I mean, if we look at, um, where's the guys? Where's the guy? There you go, Keki Top. We brought him in as a squad player. He's on £42,000 anyway. So having £25,000 brings us down to the level of Tommy O'Day, Reitz, players like that. Not really going to do a great deal for us. But we do have it there. So if we do get to a stage where we need an emergency signing, let's just say, for example, that Deant Ramage does end up going... I mean, he is an emergency backup, but £22,000 would be added to that, so it would be around £45,000, £50,000. £5 million on top of that as well. Combined with the money we've got, we could find a decent backup goalkeeper for that money and for that wage budget. So it's kind of there as an emergency, really, is what I'm, what I'm getting at. If we go back to the schedule, pre-season was pre-season. It is what it is. We lost to Mets. We drew with Bordeaux, Nantes and Rennes and won our games against a team you'd expect us to win against. A Champions League draw, by the way. Oh my God, I don't think we're going to be progressing from the Champions League. We have been given a nightmare of a draw. The games we've got, Bayern Munich at home. I mean, how many times are we going to be playing Bayern Munich this season? I don't know. Ajax away, Shakhtar Donetsk at home, Chelsea away, Partizan Belgrade away, Copenhagen away, and then sorry, at home, and then Barcelona away and Atletico Madrid at home. I would imagine we're losing against Bayern, losing against Ajax, losing against Chelsea, losing against Barcelona and losing against Atletico Madrid. If we, we might be able to get wins against Copenhagen, Partizan and Shakhtar, which would put us on nine points. If we can have, I don't know if we can actually look at the group stage from last season. Yeah, we can. So we have, have a look at this. Nine points, or oh, it could just sneak us a little knockout round game in the new year. That's how Bayer Leverkusen got, got into their last season with nine points. So if we can get nine points, we might just about make it. But looking at these games, I am full of fear, quite honestly, because that is tough. Let's be honest, that is really, really tough. We've got... Both games against Bayern coming up now. I mean, we basically played Bayern three times in our first, what, six, seven games this season? What is it? Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, three times in the first seven games of the season. I'll be sick of the sight of them by the time we finish playing them in the Champions League. We then play Hertha Berlin, then get Borussia Dortmund. That's not an easy one. Hertha Berlin, I think they must be a newly promoted side. But then we get Borussia Dortmund, which is not going to be easy. A couple of games, and then we've got Leipzig as well. I mean, we have got a really tough... The fixture list, like I said earlier, has not been kind to us. I don't think there's really anything else I need to show you. We'll have a look at the club vision. B plus from the board, B from the supporters. Everyone's happy with what we're doing. They're pleased, they're delighted, they're very pleased. Yeah, so this is the final season. This is the end of part one. We move over to part two now where we can see how we're doing in our aim to win 
the Bundesliga. Are we still on for it? Welcome back to part two of the video and our chances of winning the Bundesliga are not looking great, let's be honest. We're, we are second in the league, we're having a very good season. But we are eight points behind Bayern Munich and we've got Bayern Munich to come. So if we beat Bayern Munich in our next league game, then we would only be five points behind with, what, 13 games to play. So it would still be on at that point. But obviously if we lose and go 11 points behind them with 13 to play, I really don't see us beating Bayern Munich. At one point in the season, though, early on, after 10 games, I think it was, Bayern Munich had won nine, drawn none, lost one. And the one game they had lost was that 1-0 win against us. We were at home in that game. They have since then lost 2-1 to Wolfsburg as well, who, I mean, to put it into context, Wolfsburg are down in 12, so it wasn't a good performance from Bayern Munich in that game. But if we have a look at the schedule, because I was saying we're having a very decent season, actually. Let's go back to when you was last with us. So you would have known about the defeat to Bayer Leverkusen, 3-1 in the league before the transfer window closed. The next game we played, once the transfer window did close, was a Bundesliga game against Bayern Munich. That's the 1-0 win we had. Then we lost to them also at home, but in the Champions League. As you remember, we got that tough Champions League draw. We then beat Hertha Berlin 2-0. And we then played Ajax in the Champions League. Another game I was ex probably expecting us to lose, to be fair. But we did get a win in that one, 1-0 Fabian Rees with the goal. Then we played Borussia Dortmund in the league and won 2-1, followed by a 2-1 defeat away from home against Union Berlin. Then we played Schalke at home and a 4-0 win in that game. Paul Nobel with penalty, George Lenikena with two goals and Boris Tomiak with one. That, that's probably the best performance we've had this season, or at least one of the best performances. Then we went into the Champions League against Shakhtar Donetsk and got a 2-0 win at home in that one, followed by a Bundesliga game away from home against RB Leipzig, which we lost 1-0. Uh, sorry, we drew 1-1. But... We, were, we should have won it. I mean, we conceded in the 95th minute. Such a disappointing way to surrender a win in that game, to be quite honest. Then a DFB Pokal second round game against Augsburg. As you see, we put out very, well, pretty much a, a fully rotated side in this game. Keke Top getting on the score sheet for us in a 2 0 win at home against them. Then we played them at home in the league a few days later with another 2 0 win. Then came two defeats. We played Chelsea, who are not looking that good, if we're being completely honest, in the uh, Champions League, at least. I don't know what they're doing in the Premier League. I mean, they're fifth in the Premier League. We lost that one 2-1, 2-0 down. It's always going to be a struggle to get back from there. Then we played uh, VFB Stuttgart in the Bundesliga, away from home, and lost 2-1 in that game as well. But then we got back on track with a 2-0 win at home against Werder Bremen. Then we beat Partizan 2-1 in the Champions League. And we, again, we had a pretty fully rotated team in this game, and Keke Top getting uh, getting two goals in that game for us. Then we played against Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga with a 3-0 win. I mean, this was a really good run of form for us here. Then Eintracht Frankfurt, 2-1 win at home against them in the DFB Pokal. Keke Top and Brajan Gruda with, again, a, pretty much a fully rotated side in that game. Then we played Heidenheim, and I mean, this was a game and a half, 4-3 away from home. Thankfully, we were on the right side of a 4-3. Two goals from George Lenikena, who is the joint top goal scorer in the Bundesliga. So our purchase of him has been absolutely worthwhile. And after that, we played Copenhagen in the Premier in the Premier League, in the Champions League, and won 3 0 Another couple from Lenikena. Lenikena on a score sheet again in a 2-0 win against Eintracht Frankfurt at home. A 2-0 win followed against Bochum in the Bundesliga away from home. And again, Lenny Kenner on the score show. I mean, he's getting, you can see here, he was in a real vein of form here. Then we had the mid season break. We had a, a pre season friendly or pre pre season friendly against Rajika, where we won 5 2. Then we played Mainz in the Bundesliga, first game back after the pre season break. 3 0 winning there. Lenny Kenner picking up exactly where he left off. Then a couple of disappointing, well, one disappointing result in the fact that we drew 0 0 with Wolfsburg. But then we played Barcelona in the Champions League. Again, a game this was fully expecting to lose. We got pummeled. We were terrible. And they were just really good. Alexander Mitrovic, by the way, playing for Barcelona. Who would have thought they'd have seen that? 
Then we played Freiburg in the Bundesliga with a 5-2 win against them. Then came a game against Atletico Madrid where I'd already earmarked this one down as a defeat along with Barcelona. I was, I was saying to myself, if we can get 9-10 to 10 points after the game against Kobe, or by the time we finish the game against Copenhagen, then we should at least get through to the knockout playoff round game. After losing against Barcelona, we then went into the game against uh, Atletico Madrid. When we won that 2-1, we played on the Tuesday. By the end of that game, we were sixth in the table and on for an pl- automatic qualification. Unfortunately, teams behind us won and we ended up not getting the automatic promotion. But we are into the playoff part of it. We'll show you that in a second. Then, most recently, we played by Leverkusen in the Bundesliga and lost 1-0 in that game as well. And our next game, which is today in game, 1st of February, we've got Bayer Leverkusen as well in the DFB Pokal away from home. We were unable to beat them at home, so I'm not hopeful we're going to beat them away from home. But you never know. And then comes the game against Bayern Munich. And this really is a must-win game to the point where I'm considering putting in a fully rotated side against Bayern Munich so that our Big players are actually fresh for the game against Bayern Munich because at the end of the day, the Bundesliga is what matters. It's not the DFB Pokal or the Champions League. So, yeah, our aim for winning the Bundesliga, we have to do it this season or we failed the rebuild. Yeah, not looking great. If we go to transfers quickly, we have had one player go out and that's Tobias Rashel. Me and him had a bit of a falling out. He came to me... First of all, he came to me because... He wasn't getting enough games. I told him he's not good enough. Then he came to me because I hadn't registered him in for the Champions League games against Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, whichever one of those it was. Bear in mind, I hadn't registered him in the Champions League prior to that. He got the oath about that as well. So again, I just told him he just isn't good enough. I've got better players in his position. Then he threatened that he was going to come back at me with the squad and this, you know, he's not happy, this, that and the other. So I put him down into the Kaiserslautern 2 team. And then I had him come back to me again, asking me why I've demoted him to the second team. Then I had the entire squad come to me because they're unhappy at my treatment of him. So I put him up for sale. Fulham came in. I mean, to be fair, quite a few clubs did come in for him. But Fulham came in with a bit of a loan fee and whatever else. And where's his... So the loan option they have on him, it's an obligation if they avoid relegation from the Premier Division, they will then pay me £12.75 million. Bear in mind, I've not paid for him. He, he was already here when we came here. I think £12.75 million for someone that's... He's a decent player, don't get me wrong, but he's, he's never going to be in our first team. I don't think that's too bad an option, to be fair. We've had offers for loads of other players as well. And Tony, Milambo, Diant, Ramaj, among others. But we have been rejecting them all. And luckily, so far... Nobody's come back with the ump with me. As you can see, Lenny Kenner with 11 goals in the Bundesliga is at the joint top goal scorer in the league. Borges Sanchez, by the way, he's got a release clause in his contract and we very nearly lost him. His release fee is 35 million and Feyenoord came in. They matched his release clause just like they did with Nabel in part one of the video. And I thought he was going to be gone. They came in with the offer. We had to accept it for obvious reasons. But he turned them down to stay with us. And I'm very glad he did because if we look at his form this season, in 19 appearances, two of those as subs, 10 goals, 14 assists at 7.16. He has been incredible for us in all competitions. 28 appearances, 14 goals, 8 assists. That's 22 goal contributions in 28 appearances. He has been fantastic for us. So I'm really glad we didn't lose him. But, you know, I mean, as it is now, the transfer window is closed. We've got him for the rest of this save at the very least. If we go back to the competitions page, as you know, we won the German, uh, we were runner-up runner up, in the German Super Cup, losing out to Bayern Munich in that one. In a DFB Pokal, we are into the quarterfinals after, uh, or next we'll be up against Bayer Leverkusen. In the Champions League, we'll just go to the um, group stage of it. Where's the, here we go, the league phase. And actually, we finished 11th on 15 points. We were just one point away from getting a place in the actual proper knockout stage. The fact that we've been given a game against Napoli, I kind of feel a little bit hard done by. 
if I'm being completely honest. Because you think we could have had any of these teams on this hand, this side. I wouldn't have minded Braga, I wouldn't have minded Porto, but at least we avoided Liverpool. I wouldn't have minded Leipzig, to be honest. I wouldn't have minded Bilbao, but at least we avoided Liverpool and Juventus, I suppose is one way of looking at it. But yeah, a tough tie against Napoli. We got to this stage last season and went out to, I think it was Atletico Madrid last time. So hopefully we can get past Napoli and at least get into the knockout stage proper. If not, I'm happy with getting to here. I think for little old Kaisers out, we're doing pretty well. In terms of our staffing, by the way, I just want to show you this because our coaching, we are among the best in the Bundesliga. In terms of goalkeeper handling, we are second behind Bayern Munich. In terms of fitness, we are third behind Bayern Munich and whoever the other club is. And in people management, we are third behind Bayern Munich and another club. Everything else, we top the table on. We have the best scouting team in the Bundesliga. In terms of physiotherapy, we're second only behind, Bundes uh, behind Bayern Munich. And in sports science, we are third behind Eintracht Frankfurt. And I would imagine Bayern Munich would be the other team. And we are maxed out. And I've not really put much focus into what I'm, um, what staff I'm employing either. I've basically just put adverts out, got people in off that when people have left. And I think we have a really, really good staff itself. I know it's not all gold or all yellow, whichever colour you prefer. But I think that is pretty decent for a club like Kaiserslautern. In terms of our youth intake, it's not, obviously not come in yet, but this is the preview of it they reckon it's going to be an excellent youth intake looks like we have a couple of good prospects in central midfield or at least one then fullbacks defensive midfielders and strikers are a C I don't think it's going to come in as a excellent youth intake but when we look at this chart here there's three strikers in there there's two wing backs on the right two defense uh, central defenders it could be decent. Not that it's going to benefit us in any way, shape or form, because obviously this is the last season of the save. But it, it's about leaving the club set up in a good position as well. If we look at finances, we've got 59.4 million in the banks. We're not losing too much money during the course of the season. 8.6 million in the transfer budget. We have about £40,000 to spend in the wage budget. I just never felt the need to go in and get anyone. I'm quite happy with what we've got here. Plus... Anyone we do bring in, we're going to be looking at paying them more than 40000 if they're going to make a first-team impact anyway. So, yeah, that is how it's going so far in part two. We'll have a look at dynamics as well quickly. Team cohesion is good. Club atmosphere is excellent. Managerial support is very good. We've got a few unhappy players. Mika Hass, as we know. Marcel Locker wants to start more games. I'm starting him in literally every game at the moment. I don't know what more he wants me to do. Rasmus Carstensen wants to start more games, which, again, I'm starting him regularly. And Antonio Malambo wants to go on loan to Cagliari to help further his development. And I said no. But they're just... I think Locker and Carstensen will be fine in a couple of weeks' time. And Malambo will get over it and Mika has to be gone by the end of the season anyway. So that is where we are at the moment. The big question now, as we move over to part three, is can we retain a DFB Pokal? Can we get through to the knockout stage proper of the Champions League? But more importantly than all, can we win the Bundesliga? Well, we failed. We finished second. 12 points behind Bayern Munich. If we put it into some sort of perspective, though, they, they've hit 90 points, which over the previous four or five years of this save, 90 points has never been hit. We finished on 78 points, which would have been enough in the first season to have won it although we weren't in the Bundesliga. The season we finished 10th, 78 points, would have got a second by three points behind Bayern. Third season, we would have won it when Leipzig won it. Last season, if we had 78 points, we'd have been closer, but still second. Basically, any season where Bayern Munich have not won the league, we would have won it with 78 points. So that is tough. You know, we were 18 points clear of third and fourth place, Borussia Dortmund and SC Freiburg. And 20 points ahead of Werder Bremen in fifth. We had, what, four defeats all season? That was against Bayer Leverkusen, VfB Stuttgart, Union Berlin and Bayer Leverkusen. Again, we really struggled against Bayer Leverkusen, I have to say that much. Six draws, which was against Mainz, Leipzig, Bayern, Wolfsburg, Leipzig again and Freiburg. 
and then we had 24 wins. I'm not going to go reading all the, all of them out. But if we have a look at Bayern's schedule, just their Bundesliga, because they are a machine, Bayern Munich. They really are. I mean, the last time you was with me was just before they played against us in the Bundesliga. And just look, we took a point off them there, but they just won every single game. You know, how are we supposed to win a league when Bayern Munich are just winning everything? I mean, the, the last time they lost was against Wolfsburg in October. You know, they, they went seven months without, or very nearly seven months, without losing a game. They are just a machine to try and combat Bayern Munich. You might do it for the odd season like we've seen with Leipzig, but yeah, you, you've, you've got to be a machine just like they have. And you know what? I think if we had another one or two seasons at Kaiserslautern, I think we will win the Bundesliga. But five seasons with a team in the Bundesliga too just isn't enough. If we have a look at our other competitions, the Champions League, we got through to the round of 16. We beat Napoli in the knockout round and got through to the round of 16, but was knocked out by Arsenal. And in the DFB Pokal, we were knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen in the quarterfinal. Of course, we were knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen. I hate by. I mean, if we actually go to our schedule and go back to when you was with us last, and it was for us, I think it was this game here, we was just about to play against Bayer Leverkusen in the DFB Pokal quarterfinal. And then we had Bayern Munich after that. But if we actually have a look at by Leverkusen, our head-to-head -head with them. Where's the... Oh, there you go, grievous meetings. I mean, there you go. We have not won a single game against Bayer Leverkusen. We've played nine. We've lost eight and drawn one. We've barely even scored against them as well. We've scored three goals and conceded 14. A goal difference of minus 11. If we have a look at how we compare against Bayern Munich. I don't think we're going to be that much better against Bayern Munich, but I think we are a little bit better. There you go. We've got two wins, two draws, six defeats in the 10 games we've played, scored seven. So, yeah, we certainly had our, our bogey teams, shall we say. And if we just go through the schedule, so, yeah, we lost 3-1 against Bayer Leverkusen in the DFB Pokal. Then we drew 2-2 with Bayern Munich. We did go 1-0 up, then they instantly hit back 1-1. Then we went 2-1 up with Alex Garrido and then Kenneth Taylor in the 92nd minute, heartbreakingly stealing the win from us. Not that that would have made a great deal of difference at the end of the season, but you know. Then we played Hertha Berlin with a 5-1 win against them at home. Colin Klein, Bacal getting on the score sheet, Ravi Matondo over a couple and Lenny Kenner also getting it. Then we played against Napoli and my motto in any competition it's a two-legged affair is stay in it in the in the away leg you know so if you have the away leg first draw the game lose the game by one goal obviously try and win it but just stay in the game and then do the business at home we actually done it the other way around we we won at, we won away from home with Lenny Kenner and Garrido getting on the score sheet and then in the away leg we then had a 2-1 win against Borussia Dortmund and then in the, in the home leg, we drew 0-0. Then came Union Berlin. We beat them 3-0 in the league before losing the home leg against Arsenal 1-0. Ethan Ranieri getting on the score sheet. Then we played Schalke and had a 3-2 win against them in the Bundesliga before a quite remarkable 5-3 away leg against um, Arsenal in the second leg of the Champions League. Borges... Sanchez getting on the score sheet, Reese and Gruda, three wingers or inside forwards all getting on the score sheet. So we was out of the Champions League at that point, but super proud. It was an improvement on the previous season and we did go out to a team that did go on to do quite well in the tournament. I'm not sure if they got to the final or not. No, they didn't get to the final. They got to the semi-final when they went out to AC Milan and AC Milan were about to take on Real Madrid in the final. Then a 1-1 draw against Leipzig. A 2-0 win followed away from home against Augsburg. Then we had a 1-0 win at home against VfB Stuttgart. A 2-1 win away from home against Werder Bremen. 
a 4-1 win away from home against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Then we had Heidenheim in the... So I just noticed my goal scorers have vanished. I don't know where that's gone to. This has suddenly decided to change itself. But yeah, Heidenheim, we won 4-2 at home against them. Eintracht Frankfurt, 2-0 away from home against them. And then we finished the season with a 5-1 win against Bochum. Bear in mind, I think it was after the Heidenheim game. Bayern Munich then played before we played Frankfurt and they won the league with like three games to go, basically. And then Mainz, a 3-3 draw as our last ever game as Kaiserslautern manager. So, yeah, it's been eventful. We had a really good budget set as well, but we had £84 million originally set for us and then we got some money for Tobias Rashel's move to Fulham because they did avoid relegation, so his move has now become permanent. So we've actually got £91.5 million in the transfer. The deals we can do with that money. And our wage budget has gone up slightly. We would probably put that up a little bit more if I was going to be here next season. I mean, they're not letting us put it up anymore at the moment. But once it ticks over to the new season, I'll definitely look at moving that up. Give us an extra couple of hundred thousand in a wage budget. It probably takes us out about £85 million in the transfer budget. In terms of dynamics, we have very good team cohesion. Excellent club atmosphere and very good managerial support. If we have a look at the hierarchy, we don't usually look at the hierarchy. But if we click on this, it shows that pretty much everybody is with me. There's three, which is Baselli, Ola and Malambo, that don't have an opinion of me. But everybody else is in support of me. Have a quick look at the social groups. We have two social groups. That's our main one. That's our secondary one. And also in terms of finances, we have like £132.5 million in the bank. We are leaving this club in really good financial footing. If we have a look at the debts and loans, the transfer debt is only £43 million. I, th I worked it out somewhere along the line when I looked at transfers that over the course of the five seasons, we spent something like £158, or let's say £160 million in bringing transfers in. So you've got what? 650,000 there, you've got, say that's 4 million in total, 11.5 million, 59 million, 165, so 165 million pound we've spent on transfers. Also goes to show what a nine, how big a 90 million pound transfer budget is for us as well. But when you put that into comparison to Bayern Munich, for example, and we just have a quick look at Bayern and their transfer spend, they, they spent like near on 600 million, I think it is. And go back to the start, let's say 117 million in season one. I mean, 240 million in season two. That is just ludicrous. Matteo Guendouzi for 92 million from Marseille. That is crazy money. And, you know, that, that, you know they, the money they spend is, is out, out of this world. 108 million, 71 million, 101 million. So, yeah, something like 650 million or whatever it was they spent on players coming in. It's not like they've had a massive amount going out of 50 million. I mean, to be fair, that summer, they've done some business that summer, didn't they? 240 million spent, 260 million coming in. Sabitza left the club, Sadio Mane left the club, Joshua Kimmich went to Saudi Arabia for 134 million. Oh, my word, that is balmy. There's talk. That and that's in what, 24, 25? The same summer in real life, which is this summer coming. There's talk of him potentially going to a Premier League club for around 50 million. But he's gone to Al Ali for 130. He's in the last year of his contract there as well. That is mad. Um, Thomas Muller. I mean, they've even managed to get 5 million for Thomas Muller. Who's like, now he's 30. Actually, he's like 35 at the time. Who else have they spent? Matthias Tell went to Manchester United. Gabriel Gonzalez went to Freiburg. Leon Goretzka went for 78 million, rising to 95 million. He was just about in his 30s as well at the time. I mean, they have done some crazy business. To be fair to them, they have spent a lot of money, but here, 147 million coming in. What big num signings have they, or sales have they done there? Graven Birch for 16 million. Kingsley Coman to Saudi Arabia. I think there's some sort of affiliation between Bayern Munich and Saudi Arabia, you know. I really do. 121 million this year, or last season, 26, 27, the season before, whatever it was. Conrad Lehmer to Borussia Dortmund for 24 million. 
Douglas Luiz to Leipzig for 24 million. Christopher Ayer to Barcelona for up to 52 million. I mean, it's mad the business said. They're, they're pretty much making money every summer. 62 million this season. Most of that was on Francisco Trincao to Leipzig. Well, they even don't mind send, selling to their rivals, do they? Right, this isn't the Bayern Munich end of season review. It is the Kaiserslautern one. So, yeah, that's how we've done. I mean, us ourselves, from this point here, if we filter our form for just the Bundesliga as well, where are we, Bundesliga? From the point where we played Bayern Munich, I mean, you can see the difference between us and them, can't you? Oh, hang on, that's wrong. There you go. You can see the difference between us and them that we only dropped points in three games. One of those was against Bayern Munich. So Leipzig and Mainz when the league had already been lost. And even with form like that, we still were not good enough to get closer to Bayern Munich. Absolute machines. Right, what we'll do now is we'll move over to the end of season review and have a look at that. Here we are then. The end of season review has arrived. No little trophy here, sadly enough. Although in our time here, in our five years, we've won the Bundesliga 2 and DFB Pacal plus runners-up in the Bundesliga twice. I don't think that's a bad achievement, to be honest. Right, new arrivals. George Lenny Kenner absolutely gets our sign of the season. He has been immense. I said that I was expecting big things from him this season. 23.5 million from Antwerp. 45 appearances, 30 goals, 5 assists, 7.19. This boy has just... I mean, look at all his attributes just going up and up and up and up. It... He's, he's only 21 years old. He's going to get better and he's going to get better. He's got a valuation at the moment of up to 63 million. Surely it's only a matter of time before he makes or gets a cap for France at national level. When you've banged in 30 goals in, in German football in a season, surely your name's got to be on the France manager's list. Rasmus Carstensen from Copenhagen for 13 million. 40, no, 51 appearances. Three goals, nine assists at 7.06. Eric Martel, probably a little bit disappointed. He, he started performing better towards the end of the season. But we got him from FC Carl for 9.25 million. 39 appearances, 11 of those as a sub. Two goals, six assists at 6.89. Sebastian Baselli started off as our right back, but then Carstensen kind of overtook him. From by Leverkusen, 35 million. He's had 48 appearances, one goal, four assists at 6.88. Keke Top from Newcastle, he's basically just a backup, um, nothing more than that. Three and a half million. He had 24 appearances, 20 of them were from the subs bench. Four starts, four goals, 6.85. He does a job when we needed him to. Antoni Malambo from Juventus under 23s, 9.25 million, barely played for us to be fair. 11 appearances, 8 of those were a sub, 6.83. Alex Garrido, who started off as a backup option for us, eventually actually kind of came in as a first-team regular alongside Nobel, taken over from Martel, really. From the Barcelona B team, on a free transfer, I think that's a pretty decent bargain, considering he's a free transfer. He's only got a valuation of around £3 million now, but he's 24 years old. He's a competent workhorse midfielder, you know, You'd love to have him in your team just as that backup option, really. Uh, Brian Gruda from Heidenheim for 12 million. Two goals, two assists, 6.76. Never really done a great deal for us. 32 appearances, 12 of those were starts. In terms of the transfers out, Jan Bola was the only one we, set, we let go for any money. Um, 33 appearances, one goal, one assist, 6.98. Seemed like he had a pretty decent season for Sturm Graz. Aaron Apoku went to Osnabrück on a free transfer. Five assists in 13 appearances, 7.32. Jerry Dudziek went to Lavalem FC, whoever they are. Where do they play? Western Europe. I have no idea. Oh, French national. There you go. So he's French non-league, basically. That's how poor he was. Um, yeah, he's had a reasonable season. And John Zimmer has gone to Hansa Rostock second and not made an appearance. In terms of a season to remember, the Bundesliga finished second, 96% average home attendance. George Lenny Kenner was their top goal scorer with 24 goals. The board are absolutely delighted by it. So am I. Champions League, I mean, we had some pretty... I mean, the, the games we lost in the Champions League were Bayern Munich, Chelsea, Barcelona and Arsenal. 
We've beaten Ajax, Shakhtar, Partizan Belgrade, Copenhagen, Atletico Madrid, Napoli. We've had a pretty good season. I'm really happy with that. George Lenikena with five goals was our top goal scorer in the Champions League. So I just realised I missed the DFB Pokal. That's it. We actually had a pretty tough run this season. Last season we had it pretty easy when we won it. But non-league in the first round, but then Augsburg, Eintracht Frankfurt, by Leverkusen, and eventually we obviously fell to by Leverkusen. Borges Sanchez with three goals was their top goal scorer in that competition. And the Super Cup, just in case you want to have a look at it, we beat Bayern Munich 1-0. Right, let's move on to the moments to remember. The biggest win was a 5-1 win against Hertha Berlin. The match to remember was a 2-2 draw away from home against Bayern Munich. And the goal of the season was from Borges Sanchez, a top draw goal from the winger as he hits a place shot from 22 metres. That was in a 5-2 win over Freiburg. Continental reputation, that will probably be bumped up a little bit more as well because of our continued improvement in the Champions League. Sponsorship's gone up by 3 million. Broadcast revenue has somehow managed to go down by 1.5 million. Corporate and hospitality has gone up by half a million. Competition prize money has gone up by 3 million. And match day commercial and retail has gone up by a few pennies, basically. Total merchandise sales, that's the highest we've ever had, 6.42 million in merchandise sales. 415,451 shirts have been sold. Lenny Kenner, Sanchez Borges, Reese, Nabel and Matondo are our five biggest shirt sales. In terms of how we line up, do we agree with this? We had Locker in goal, John left back, Carstensen right back, Mendy and klein in the middle. Yeah, I agree with that back five. Wright, Martel and Neville. Yeah, I mean, maybe put Garrido in there, but yeah, maybe Martel as well. Sanchez, Borges, Reese, and Lenny Kenner. Can't argue with that. Lenny Kenner, Sanchez, Borges, Nabel and Christensen and Lotka all being our best players. Record breakers, George Lenny Kenner with 30 goals for the club has scored the most overall goals by a player in a season. Most league goals by a player in a season is George Lenny Kenner with 24 and highest transfer fee paid was Sebastian Baselli for 35 million. In terms of the player awards, fans player of the season, George Lenny Kenner. There's going to be a female, I think. Young player of the season, George Lenny Kenner. Sign of the season, George Lenny Kenner. Top goal scorer, George Lenny Kenner. Goal of the season is Borges Sanchez. Most assists is Borges Sanchez with 11. Then most player of the match awards, Rabi Matondo. Highest average rating, George Lenny Kenner. And most passes completed per 90 minutes, Colin klein Bacal. who, by the way, if you remember him last season getting six goals in the league, I think it was nine overall. Yeah, nine overall. This season, he didn't score in any other competition, but five goals in the league, very consistent. Considering he cost us 4.8 million, He's probably been one of the better signings we've had at this club. Moving on to history in the making. They say it's important to get off to a good start, but it rings as true as ever for Kaiserslautern this season. Kaiserslautern looked sharp right out of the gates. Few would have expected this outcome, but they gave themselves a chance and have reaped the rewards. And the manager timeline is what the manager timeline is. If we have a look at the supporter profile, let's have a look at that. That's what it's all made up of. Supporters' influence is still high. 2.8 social media followers. And they're pretty happy with everything that I'm doing. I think they're going to be very upset to see me leave, quite honestly. But the only the, the only other thing I want to really show you before we finish is... Let's have a look at set pieces. I haven't looked at this. I don't know if we're the best or not. But where are we? Goals from corners. So we're not the best. We're second best. So by... by by Leverkusen, I've got 15 goals from corners. We've got 14. So right up there, again, from direct free kicks, we've had one. And from indirect free kicks, we've only had two this season. So we are a bit lower down on the indirect free kicks than what we were last season. But importantly, the corner side of it, again, we're up there amongst one of the best. So yeah, set pieces, very easy, very overpowered as well. If I actually put proper real effort into this I would just be a mile clear every season to be quite honest right well there you go that is it that is the end of the series ultimately we failed it's our first failure or my first failure I can't really blame you guys it's my first failure at doing these rebuilds but next week I'm going to pick my suitcase up pick my passport up and we're going to go somewhere else 
away from England, I think, for the next five episodes. And then after that, we will do one more rebuild after that before we then stop the rebuilds before FM25 then starts. But join me next week. I'll be quite honest with you, I haven't decided where I'm going. It's either going to be Italy or Spain, I imagine. But that'll be a surprise for you next week. So tune in then, 2 p.m. on Sunday, as always. Please leave a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next weekend for more rebuilding. Thank you.